Hey, that's Dr. Clint Steele here. I uh, want to come in and do a, um, a, a short video on cold hands, so hand temperature, chiropractic, and erectile dysfunction, and also HRV. We're going to show an HRV, very low frequency HRV, which is very important because here's the deal. Um, I've had numerous patients, men, men come in, and uh, I didn't know this at first, but now I'm starting to see this trend, and now I can pretty much tell uh, when a man has erectile dysfunction, even if he hasn't told me, or and or I can also predict if he's going to get something like erectile dysfunction. And here's here's how it happens. Understand first that this is what happens. One of the things that we use the neuroaffinity uh, to measure is hand temperature. A lot of docs say, well, hand temperature, that's no big deal. Whatever. Well, like what? What's the point? Right. The point is huge because this is uh, one of the first areas we start to see a brain that is stuck in survival mode, that's stuck in sympathetic engagement. And the reason that's so important is because immediately one of one of the areas that's going to very first change as soon as the brain goes from healing mode to, to survival mode is it's going to pull blood. It's going to take the blood supply. It's going to say to the blood supply, listen, we don't need blood anymore to our fingers and toes we need that blood to go to our vital organs and our big muscles so that we can escape the burning bill, so we can run faster, so we can jump, we can grip onto things. It doesn't need blood supply at fingers and toes, right? And so what happens is hand temperature starts to go down. Now, the reason this is so important, and when we bring this back to erectile dysfunction, is because when your brain is in survival mode, okay, it's doing that with the blood supply to your fingers and toes. What do you think it's doing to the blood supply to your genitals, right? To your, to your, to your reproductive organs. It says, dude, I'm trying to escape a burning building here. I'm trying to run from a lion. I'm trying to escape a bear. I don't need blood going to my penis. Guys, get this, right? Get this. And so we can now tell docs. I, I'm seeing this in, in men coming in. I can tell, okay. They probably have erectile dysfunction. When I take, when I, when I see their hand temperature is super cold it's flatline, which I'm going to show you here in just one second. And I look at their very low frequency of their heart rate variability, and it's way too high. And the research is there. The research is there. You guys look up very low frequency of HRV, and you will see that it's increased risk of hormonal changes, okay? Especially testosterone. Okay, so now we've got the blood supply. Now we've got testosterone issues. Guys, the guy's screwed, right? The great news is this. We can change this. We can fix this. So let me show you, let me share with you my screen here real quick. So here's the Neuroinfinity uh, or the stress response evaluation report. This is just the gauge graph. This, I mean, this is just the bar graph just for the doctor. I don't have the gauge graph here and I don't have the pictures, but, uh, or the images, but you can see here, this very low frequency. So ideally heart rate variability should look like this, very low here, then high, then very low. Should be like a top hat formation. So we look over here, Mr. Jones, does yours look like that? No, not even close, right? So this part right here, the very low frequency is very important because this is the start of the heartbeat. By the way, docs, if you're measuring heart rate variability and you're not using the neuroinfinity, chances are, um, in fact, most likely you're not getting this. Uh, this is mixed in with these two uh, measurements here. And so you don't even know what this is. And this is very important because the the the, the research is very clear. When this is too high, this very low frequency is too high. This is the start of the heartbeat. This is where the vagus nerve attaches to the heart. And so when this is too high, this is cause for increased risk of all-cause mortality, arrhythmic death, systemic inflammation, and testosterone issues or hormonal imbalance, especially testosterone. So here's one right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this person's uh, hand temperature as well. So I'm going to pause this real quick. Um, Hold on one second. I'm going to pause this real quick. Now we come down. This this is the same person's hand temperature. Now their hand temperature should ideally be between 94 and 97. It should go down during stress. Again, we're pulling blood away from the hands during stress. And then when we recover, we close our eyes to relax. It should go up. That's why this gray bar is there. This goes up and down. So this is the adaptability, right? This is the, the one of the most important things that we need to know about the brain and nervous system. Is it adaptable? Can it adapt? Can it, can it, can it perceive the environment properly and then change physiologic function, adaptability? Is this person adapting? Okay, this is the same gentleman. So we knew his very low frequency was way too high. And now his hands are way too cold. Should be between 94 and 97. He's at 76. 
And in addition, he's not even adapting. Not going up and down, not going up and down. So what happens to this guy's blood supply Okay, when he is laying down, trying to have, you know, be intimate with his partner, blood supply says, you know what? I don't know what to do. That's that's where this comes in. See this flat line right here? Uh, the way I explain this to a patient, if this was an EKG and this flat line, would you be concerned? Uh, absolutely. Same thing happens here. You see, when we see a flat line here of the brain and nervous system, specifically here, hand temperature, now we see may see it in other areas too, but specifically, we're talking hand temperature. So we see a flat line in hand temperature. Is that concerning? Yes, because just like an EKG and a heart given out, this is the brain given out. This is the brain saying, you know what? I don't know what to do. So I'm just I'm just going to leave it here. It doesn't know where to put the blood. It doesn't know when to pull the blood from. And it doesn't know when to return that blood supply back to where it should go. This is a huge red flag and an indication that this guy, if he doesn't have erectile dysfunction now, more than likely in the next few months to a couple years, he's more than likely going to have erectile dysfunction. Okay. Now, let me share another one with you. So, so the last one we saw was a gentleman who was in his fifties. This is a 37 year old. This is a 37 year old male. And again, we look at his heart rate variability, very low, high. I mean, low goes up higher, high, and then high drops. So it should be like a top hat formation, just like this. But again, over here, we look at his very low average. Usually anything above 10 is concerning. Uh, the other guys was, was 40. This guy's at 37. But look what happens to this guy when he's under cognitive stress. This green bar is a cognitive stress. It's a math test. But not so much about the math test. It's about having to make and think through a cognitive decision. Make it a cognitive decision. Have a, have a, a cognitive problem and then have to figure it out. Look at what that does to this guy's start of his heartbeat. Okay, way, way too high. So this guy, when he's ever making decisions, and I don't know what this guy does for work. This came out of uh, from a doc up in uh, up in uh, Idaho, I believe. But if this guy works in a in a in a business where he's making decisions all day, if he runs his own business, he's under cognitive stress all day. Okay, this guy is at risk of cardiac arrest. Number one, number two, more than likely. Okay, probably not at thirty seven, but. This guy is a candidate because I'm going to show you his hand temperature here in just one second. But this guy is a candidate for more than likely having testosterone issues and probably some erectile dysfunction. Now, at, at his age, 37, he might have erectile dysfunction already. I'm seeing, you guys probably have seen this before. Um, if you're a male, if you're a female, probably you don't notice it. But males, I'm seeing ads right now for, I think the company is called Hims, uh, where they, they, they sell uh, mail order Viagra, I believe. Uh, and you can get it online and get it shipped to you. They're promoting these ads to 30 something year olds. Okay. These guys are coming on and they're, they're, their spokespersons are like 30, early 30 something year olds. That's where this is headed here, docs. So we, we need to, we need to stop this. So this guy is a, a high candidate. If he's not already having erectile dysfunction or problems with some erectile dysfunction, he's probably going to be there. Let me share with you real quick, his um, hand temperature as well. So now this is his hand temperature here. Uh, again, not as bad as the next, as the last guy, but 82. So his hand hands are getting colder, should be between 94, and 97. His hands are getting colder, but again, look at, do we see the adaptability? No, we see a flat line. So again, Mr. Smith, you know, if this was an EKG in this flat line, would you be concerned? Absolutely. Same thing with your brain and nervous system. When we see this start to flatline, that's a concern that your brain is giving up. It's it's moving into an exhausted state. It doesn't know where to send blood. In, in this case, it doesn't know where to send blood or pull blood from. And it, so it just gives up. What will eventually happen is this guy, uh, his hand temperature is more than likely going to get worse and worse and worse because blood supply is going to stay in his vital organs and big muscles. And what's that going to lead to, guys, in regards to uh, his uh, erectile dysfunction? Okay. If he doesn't have it now, he, he more than likely is heading that way. So hopefully this helps you guys uh, understand this a little bit better. For those of you that do have an NI, for those of you that don't have a neuroinfinity, guys, this is a game changer. This is a no brainer. This is unbelievable. Uh, just look at the testimonials, go to our website, check it out. Uh, let's jump on a call. Let's uh, let's first off, let's jump on a call. Let's see if it's a fit for you. Number one, number two, uh, if it is, then we can discuss the details, right? Because here's the thing. Not only does it have to be a fit for you, but you have to be a fit for us. 
because we don't sell these just to anybody. We, we only we only have docs come on board with us that we know are going to be dedicated to this and are going to be on board with this because we're going to invest our time and energy and resources into you. We want the same in return. We just don't want to get you a piece of equipment and it sits there in the closet and collects dust. That's not what this is about. This is about saving lives because these gentlemen here, yeah, they're moving towards erectile dysfunction and testosterone issues. But again, in addition, what's happening, these are all brain problems. So over the course of another 10, 15, 20 years, as their brain becomes more and more exhausted, they're moving towards early onset Alzheimer's or dementia or Parkinson's disease or any other list of conditions that involve a brain and nervous system that's basically given up. And so we're saving more lives. We are saving more lives. So docs, again, let's jump on board. Uh, the third thing is, is, again, if it's a fit for you, if it's a fit for us, then let's get started. Okay, let's help you explode your practice and save more lives. We're doing that with docs all over the world. Talk to you soon. I'm out.